Do I really have to do this again? <laughs> and he's oh, yeah. gonna go and try to live. <laughs> he's gonna go and try to win. What's his deal? I think what you what meant to say is he's going to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he won. All right. Listen. Putting my hair up. That's how you know it's serious. The last time I talked about Spellbreak, uh, it was in beta, and I was kind of a vitriolic dickhead for no reason other than, haha, it's funny, I'm mad. Not only that, but I didn't really take the time to highlight the thing that I liked about the game, which was the core gameplay. Mixing and matching spells and sorceries is really fun and seeing how they interact with each other in the environment. So I started again, because the game hit Steam, like, uh, literally three weeks ago, so I figured, hey, it's probably gonna have a pretty big bump in players, right? Well, it had a bump. It's doing a lot better on Twitch. The last time I talked about it, it had like, I don't know, 250 viewers at any given time, and now every time I check, it's got consistently over a thousand viewers, which is pretty good, all things considered. Now, the game isn't perfect yet, don't get me wrong, I'm not doing like a 180 here or anything, but it could be damn good with the power of updates. Mm. The core gameplay is there and it has so much potential. You could almost consider this like my own little personal wish list of things that I think could make the game better. Now, if you already think the game is perfect, then you can just go ahead and skip right down to the comments and tell me to game over myself and be on your merry way. But for everybody else that knows that the game is not perfect, stick around, listen to what I have to say. Sound design. Uh oh, is there something happening? Nope, nope, that's just our teammate using teleport. That- that's the sound of teleporting, a fucking nuclear bomb going off in your ear. That's what teleporting sounds like. Now, a lot of battle royales have this problem, but this game's got a lot of problems with the sound design. Some sounds are too loud, some are too quiet, some are too distant sounding, and some just straight up don't even fit what's happening at all. The dash rune, for example, right? It allows you to dash. Now, when I use the dash rune, what I hear is like a whoosh. It makes a whooshing noise when I dash. When a teammate uses it, it sounds like a grenade is going off in their pocket. It's like an explosion, and I don't know why it sounds like that. Like, I'm not hearing the same sound effect from them that I hear from me. And I get that it's a different perspective, but if anything, it should be quieter coming from them, not louder. Same thing with teleport. I nearly shit myself every time a teammate teleports near me because it doesn't sound like a teleport it sounds like an explosion and yes i have it set on headphones or whatever it's not set to speakers i have all the settings proper all my audio drivers are fine everything's good every other game i play sounds normal but this one not so much something that i would like to see is a lot of other games do this where enemies that make a specific noise sounds really loud and when a teammate makes that noise it's really quiet. That way, when you hear a loud noise and it startles you, it's for a reason. It's a bad guy. When a teammate does it, I want it to be nice and quiet so I can ignore it and not have a heart attack. The direction of noises and stuff that it doesn't make sense either because I'll have a teammate who's, you know, up and to the right of me walking across the floor and it sounds like they're behind me. But that's, that's just, it shouldn't sound like that. It should sound like they're over here, especially when I've got, you know, pretty decent headphones. I mean, they're not $500 Astro headphones or anything, but they're a pretty decent $150 pair of headphones. Like, I, I should be able to tell where footsteps are, or at least somewhat. Like, if they're over there, they shouldn't sound like they're over here. Voice acting. See, this is where things get fuzzy a little bit. Games like Apex and Overwatch have specific characters with specific voice actors. This game just has skins, I guess kind of like Fortnite. So really, you could just do a few generic male voices, a few generic female voices, and then pitch shift them or make them sound kind of weird for characters that wear armor over their faces. All I want to know is when a teammate is engaging the enemy, or an enemy is engaging my teammate, I would like to know, rather than just noticing that suddenly they have half of their health, and by the time I get to them, they are dead and exiled. And before someone says, oh, they're a small studio, they can't, like, go on Fiverr. 
there's so many people or just 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 pick some random person in the studio like hey can you say these canned lines for us you have kind of a nice voice there you go that's it i'm not asking for anything fancy like you don't need to hire the best voice actors ever just something so that i know that things are happening when i'm not looking at them and someone isn't pinging it it's 2021 bitch i don't want to be like having a voice chat with some xbox kid in venezuela who i can't understand who's just calling me profanities over the mic and f frankly, I think the pinging system kind of stinks anyway, and a little bit of voice acting, just just a little something for each unique ping would be helpful. I don't even care if it's a unique ping for each thing. Just say, like, gauntlet here. S like, anything. Please, anything. Make people stand out more. I can't quite put my finger on what it is about the art style in this game that makes it so hard to see people from a distance. They blend in with backgrounds, it's weird. Like the game has this kind of cell shaded ish appearance, but like the characters don't feel like they have outlines. And in fact, a lot of the environmental objects don't seem like they have outlines either. Like, look at these trees. There's no outlines to them. It's just like green mush on a brown stick. If enemies had like a thin red glow outline or, or just if every character had a little bit more solid black outlines to make them stand out. I know that allies have their names over their heads and enemies don't, but I just something to make them stand out a little bit more against the backdrop. Even on the title screen, my character has like a weird blurry appearance because it feels like there's nothing holding them together. The battle royale part of this battle royale isn't even the best part of the game. Spellbreak is pretty fucking ruthless when you get downed. If your little spirit ball that drops when you get downed gets exiled, uh, your teammates can't do shit to get you back. Nothing. There's no banners, there's no gulag, there's no buying your teammates back, nothing. You're just out. And I would understand if this were a more competitive esports title. Uh, it's not. For a game that's so cartoony and bombastic and bright and colorful, God, it takes itself seriously. Like, the, the, the core gameplay is so fun. But you, you, there's just these long, dragging pauses between fights, and sometimes you'll go almost the whole game without seeing anybody, and you're just dropped into like the last few teams, and that, like, that's all you see in the game. It is common to go most of the game without seeing anybody. That might be down to the fact that games only have like 45 people in them, so they could just increase the player count, and the map would be more condensed with players. If you die, you gotta sit and wait for a game to start, and then you gotta pick a place to drop, and then you gotta drop on the map, and then you gotta start trying to find loot, and then you don't get shit, and then you realize that the Xbox kid from Venezuela is 30 miles away, and you and the other guy in your team get uh, third partied by two other teams, and then you watch the Xbox kid fart around for 10 minutes, and die. But, but what's what's this here? What's this little button? Clash. What is that? Like team deathmatch? Like I get to respawn? Just like stop putting bots in my games because I have crossplay enabled. So I feel like I should be able to find at least 18 other people to play the game with and not have to win via mercy rule like every other match. Please. Two teams spawn on opposite sides of the map, collect some loot, and inevitably wind up in the middle of the map, and then they duke it out for the rest of the game, and every time you die, you spawn again, you drop, you land somewhere near the fights, and you just keep fighting over and over. And it's really fun to have these two teams of nine versus each other because it really lets the AOE effects of the spells and sorceries shine. Having the poison cloud mixed with the tornado really feels like it makes more sense here when there's more enemy players condensed into one area for you to attack. These are these big, explosive, exciting magic battles, and this feels like how the game should be played, but it could be better. Hear me out. So let's think about the process of a clash match. You arbitrarily pick a random spot on your side of the map, you putz around, 
you try to find some legendary loot. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. You probably don't find all of the legendary loot, but a little bit. Then you make your way to the middle of the map along with the enemy team, and you beat the shit out of each other. And the way looting works in Clash is when you die, all your loot still pops out of you. So if you've got legendary stuff, the person who killed you now also has legendary stuff. And what ends up happening is since everyone ends up, you know, people die within the first few minutes that have legendary loot, everyone just harvests their legendary stuff. And within a few minutes, everyone's fully kitted out. So the looting part uh, is fucking pointless. Give everybody maxed out loot and let them pick their gauntlets when they spawn. You can still drop every time you respawn, that's fine. But let's talk about the map. Take all of the main set pieces of the map, all of the named parts of the map, right? Okay, you take most of it away and you've got three floating islands all in like a triangle really close to each other. And each of those islands is one of the set pieces from the Battle Royale map. And every 90 seconds, one of them plummets to the earth. Like this is all like, these are floating islands in the sky. And every 90 seconds, one of them, whew, it disappears. And if you're on it, you die. So you want to make sure like you're always thinking like the clock is ticking down like, oh, I got to get on a different island so that I don't die. And you got these floating set pieces and they're rotating so the map is constantly staying fresh and you don't have to worry about looting, you can just fight. You don't even have to make new assets for this. They've already got little floating island things that they have in the tutorial. Just take the tops off of them, put these other things on top of them, and then make a skybox and some like misty fog underneath it for the, 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 the earth below. And bada bing, bada boom, you've got a clash map. The end game universe. This kind of ties into the voice acting thing a little bit, but I think it would be really cool if there was an announcer in the multiplayer modes. And I will have you know that I stayed up until 1 a.m. reading Spellbreak lore just for this part of the video. So I went from giant dickhead about this game to number one fan, sort of. In this world, magic bad. Normal people aren't supposed to use it. Only the Vow Guard are supposed to use it. And they're supposed to use it to fight the Vow Breakers, which are people who have broken their vow and use magic. So it's basically, you know, rogue magic users versus like the, the royal guard magic users. In the battle royale mode, you're a vow breaker, no matter who you are. There's multiple factions of vow breakers, so it makes sense that they'd all be fighting each other, like you're all on like opposing factions. It's not like one big, you know, vow breaker team. They're not like the Star Wars rebels. They're, they're all like in it for their own thing. I took a look at the roadmap, which was kind of light in details, but they already said that there's going to be other limited time modes available. So I'm assuming they're going to be more modes like Clash, where it's like team versus team. So make one team the breakers and one team the guard and give them each an announcer so like they have their own personality. You know, have a cool announcer that gives you a kick in the ass like, hey, we're down by 10 points, you know, get in there and show them what for, you know, like whatever, like something, give them a kick in the pants. Really lean on that lore that obviously somebody on the team is pretty passionate about writing because there is a lot of like backstory and stuff in the game in the form of the chapters and stuff that they're releasing. I, I thought it was just an excuse to have, you know, a battle pass for loot and stuff, but there, there's like quests and stuff and you learn things about the lore in the game. So like there's stuff there, use it in the game for stuff besides like arbitrary side quests that give you experience. This was going to be like a, a funnier video originally, but I ended up kind of getting sucked into the game and realized how much potential there is in Spellbreak, and I want to see that potential realized. There's more gauntlets and magic coming, which was a point that I made in my last video, so I'm excited to see what, you know, elements and things they end up using if it's like, you know, uh, wood or like blood or like, you know, something like creepy and dark like that. I don't think Spellbreak 
is ever going to compete with you know the the big the big boys as they are but i don't think it needs to because it can easily carve out its own corner of you know multiplayer shooters like it just needs to really be its own thing it can pull little things from other games like maybe the banner system from apex really like you gotta give us a little bit of lenience when we get downed. The, the whole like exile system is great when you wanna get someone's loot faster, but I, the fact that someone's gotta tickle me for five seconds and I can't play anymore is like, really? I'm a little bit sorry that I was kind of a dick about Spellbreak the last time I you know belched into a microphone about it. The difference in me between then and now is uh, I actually give a shit about the game now and I really want to see it realize its full potential and become the fun, varied game that it so inevitably could be. Honestly, Clash is the best part of this game that's listed as a battle royale. So yes, I want there to be more Clash and more multiplayer modes and stuff, but I think the Battle Royale itself could be better for the reasons that I've already listed previously. I go ahead and rewind and rewatch the video uh, if you'd like, please. I need the numbers. I'm invested now and I honestly recommend trying the Clash mode even if you don't like the Battle Royale part. I'll even link the Steam page in the description. Spellbreak, you're welcome. All 461 of my subscribers will be coming right over any minute now. Right, guys? Thank you guys for watching. I actually, like, had some fun writing and making this. Like, I'm actually, like, excited for this. And I hope that all the people that wanted to rip off my dick and shit all over me, uh, last time I made a Spellbreak video, will see this and see how much I give a shit about this game now, realizing its potential and seeing it for what it is. I think Spellbreak is pretty good, and I think it could be a lot better, and it will get better. Subscribe, like, comment below how I'm still an, an idiot dumb, you know, whatever. Tune in next time when I make a video about a video game. Probably.